Today we have two of the most track focused hardcore hot hatchbacks on the market, ready to do battle on a Welsh track. The new mini John Cooper Works GP, straight out of Oxford, this is the fastest, most powerful production mini ever. And it's up against this, the Renault Megane RS Trophy R. Current king of the Nürburgring, holding the fastest front wheel drive lap time record of any production car. We'll get down to our own lap times a little bit later, but for now, it's time to get them on the tarmac, do some laps and have some fun. If ever there was a car that ticks the box of fun, quirkiness and Britishness, it's gotta be the Mini. It's just one of those cars that brings a big smile to your face. And this is the third generation of the Mini GP. In 2006, they came out with the first GP. 2013, they had the second one. And now we're on the third generation, which a lot of people call the Mini GP3, but it's actually the Mini GP. It's a limited edition car, one of 3,000 that will be made throughout the world. And it makes it quite desirable. You know what? It's come under a little bit of stick, saying it's quite expensive at just under 35,000. But for me, for a super limited edition, little hot patch like this, with this sort of performance of just over 300 horsepower, makes it quite good value. The Megane, on the other hand, well, value might not be the word you'd use. Before we go any further, I think we ought to get one thing out of the way, and that's the price of this car. Because you can get an entry-level Renault Sport Trophy for £32,000 with the same 300 horsepower engine that we've got here. But if you want the Trophy R, the lightweight version, you have to spend at least £51,000. Then if you want the Trophy R Nürburgring pack like the car I'm sitting in now, you'll have to spend, wait for it, £71,000. But don't worry, you can't, because only two are coming to the UK. One's been sold, and the other one is this one, the Press Demonstrator. And for that extra £20,000, all you actually get is a very, very fancy set of carbon rims that would cost £12,000. They actually come lined up on where the rear seat is. You still get the red Fuji rims as well. well we've actually left those rims at home in the garage, because on this uh, wet, curb-ridden Landau track, we didn't want to damage their rims. But also with the Nürburgring pack, you get the 9,000 pound carbon ceramic brakes, which are absolutely awesome. But sadly, only 30 of the 500 global production will have those carbon ceramic brakes. So you can't have those either. Whilst the Mini might not have carbon ceramics, it still has a host of track-focused upgrades. Mini have fitted the GP with a mechanical differential, wider track, increased negative camber, and added lightness. It weighs just over 1,200 kilograms, and they've made a real effort to reduce the weight as much as they possibly can. They've taken out the rear seats, they've got these forged alloy wheels, and they haven't even got a rear wiper on the back to save weight. And I tell you what I could do with it today, just to see if Tim's creeping up on me anywhere. It's got a racy little engine, a four-cylinder turbocharged two-litre engine, the same engine, the B48 engine that's in the BMW M135i. It produces 306 horsepower, that's six more than the Megane, that costs twice as much. And it also puts it into a club of other two-litre hot hatches with around about 300 horsepower. You're in the same sort of bracket as the Audi S3, the A35, and a whole realm of hot hatches in that sort of sector. But this is different because this car is front-wheel drive. And of course, all those other cars I mentioned are all-wheel drive. So what do you get when you upgrade from a £32,000 trophy to a £51,000 trophy R, if you're lucky enough to get one of the 30 coming to this country? Well, the main thing is you get a much, much lighter car, 130 kilograms lighter to be precise. And they've achieved that by taking out the rear wheel steer system, a quite a complex rear axle that saves 40 kilograms. They've taken out the rear seats, saved 25 kilograms. They've put in wonderful carbon fiber racing seats in the front to save another 14 kilograms. Carbon fiber bonnet, eight kilograms. 
And these Fuji rims, the red rims, they save eight kilograms, they're lightweight rims. And if you do want to put on your very precious carbon rims, that will save you another eight kilograms. But it's not just that, because the amount of effort that's gone into redoing the suspension, I could thump over curbs like that, the Olin stampers take the curbs. And if you're going around the Nürburgring, you'll know that curb hopping is one thing you need to do quite a lot of. But they've also worked out the aero. This car's been in the wind tunnel, the airflow over and under the car. It's got a bigger diffuser at the back. Huge efforts have been made to carve every little extra tenth of a second out of a lap time. So both these cars follow similar philosophies in terms of front wheel drive power and lighter weight. But whether Renault has a manual gearbox, the Mini is a bit more contemporary. One major difference is you can only buy this car with an eight-speed automatic gearbox, which a lot of people aren't too happy about. I've got to say, would like the option. You can knock it into manual, but it's not quite the same when you're up and down gears. With these flappy paddles, they might be 3D printed, but for me, I just think it's crying out to have a manual gearbox, but I don't think I want to take my hands off the wheel for too long, because it is an exciting ride. <laughs> The decision to go for an auto box is a big change from the previous two GP models, which were only available with a good old fashioned stick shift. And that's not the only thing to have changed from the previous hot minis. I'll tell you what has gone, the old machine gun type sort of crackles and pops out of the exhaust. This isn't bad, it doesn't sound too bad. It sounds quite racy, which is, I guess, what you want with your little hot hatch. Many people like myself, like to have a nice little pop and crackle coming out of the exhaust on a hot hatch. I think it's something that really does enhance the whole experience. But of course, now with all the different rules and regulations, it's not really something that manufacturers can do. So I do share and sympathize uh, with them on that. Now, as usual these days, there's all sorts of modes to be played with. And it currently says I'm in neutral mode. But I have a little RS button to press down here and that jumps me straight to sport mode. Dynamic driving neutral ESC sport, powertrain sport. Why well, doesn't sound very sporty to me? I'm on a racetrack. And unlike that Megane, this car actually only comes in one mode. You only have one option. You have it in sport or you have it in sport. That's your only option. Well, technically you can also have uh, traction control off, <laughs> which of course I've got off on a track as you'd expect. But you can only have the one sport option, unlike the Megane that I know he's probably playing around with his 20 different options in there. I'll go for race. I now get ESC off, powertrain, race. That's more like it. Race it is. And of course, as this was the car that's got that Nürburgring lap record, Racing is where it should be. No auto blip. I'm doing the healing and towing by myself. I'm quite happy with that. A little bit of lift off over as it helps me out of this bus stop bouncer curb. I don't care. <laughs> Bounce another curb. You can tell the amount of work that's gone into this car because of the way it sorts out curbs. Turns in really neutral. Without that rear wheel steer, it doesn't need it. I mean, there is understeer there, but it's, I've only got a feather off the throttle a little bit. Front end tucks in. The trouble with front wheel drive, to be fast and stylish, it's always a bit rough and ready. You've got to bounce curbs and catch a bit of lift off. You can't be graceful ballet like a, a rear wheel drive car. Oh, 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 oh. You've got to be a bit brutal. And that power delivery is brutal. I could hear the turbo thrusting the power to those front wheels. But you have got to be careful of the throttle. It does spin up those front wheels because I've got the traction of the SC off. But I mean, there is an amazing enjoyment out of driving this car because it's so intense. It, it's so focused on doing the job it was designed to do. Hard on the brakes here, down as many gears as we can go. I have no idea what gear I'm in. I'm hoping it's second. 
<laughs> Wheels lighting up everywhere, nowhere near, nothing like the torque steer that you get on a road. This, it's so much smoother, of course, on a racetrack, so you're not getting that horrid torque steer or tram lining that you do get on the roads. It's much more at home on a track than it is on the roads. Hard on the brakes, through the pit pass. Whoa, a bit wide there, a damn track, but you know what? It's so sure-footed and so capable, even though it's front-wheel drive. You just want real-wheel drive, you just feel so much more in control, especially when you go around these slow little corners like this, and you just don't get the understeer with a real-wheel drive, but of course here, it's inevitable that you're gonna get a little bit of understeer. Oh. <laughs> now I'm taking liberties with it, but it does it. It almost likes you to take liberties. Go on, it's if jump that curb. I don't care. I'll go wherever you point me. That's what keeps it astounding me. How it, I keep on pushing my luck and pushing my luck, and it sorts it out. This is quite a car. I know it's seventy-one thousand pounds, but I reckon if you just have the fifty-two thousand pound mode. Missed the brakes, but oh, 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 a bit too much lift off over his tip. The trouble with you getting too sideways, you lose time. And if you want to have even more fun, we've got a proper handbrake. So when it comes to these very tight sections, I can be a bit rally driver. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's a bit over the top, Tiff. Try a bit more gently. That was better. It's not quicker this way, but you can be abusive with this car and get it all straight again. It's good. This is good. Isn't it amazing? This car, one of the most iconic cars ever. You can see why the Mini was voted the second most important car of the 20th century behind the Ford Model T and just ahead of the Citroen DS and the Volkswagen Beetle because it is just such an icon. It really is such an icon. I hope it goes another 60 years. What a fun little car. Now we were thoroughly acquainted with our cars, it was time to put them head to head, firstly with an agility test around a simulated car park. Uh, right, Paul, as you told me, I'm, I'm in a box, but I'm facing the wrong way. <laughs> what, what exactly is your plan? You're going to enjoy this because it's an old-fashioned agility test. Reverse out of your box, go around one and a half times, and then we go in opposite boxes. So I'll reverse into yours, you reverse into mine. Got it? I think so. A few too many boxes involved, but I think I'll make it. Hang <laughs> on oh, fire, I've got to do my rear wiper because where I haven't got a wiper for weight saving, I can't see a thing. Hang on two seconds. I haven't got one either, but if you think I'm getting out in this weather, you've got another thing coming. Three, two, one, go. Quick, a little bit, of first gear, that's it. Come on, come on, oh, no, no. Have, have I won then? That was easy. That was a, I like your games, Paul. Yeah, never won a race quite so easily. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, my auto gearbox wouldn't play ball, so we tried again. Two, one, go. Oh, a little bit of a cheap there. Oh, got an understeer, a bit of a handbrake. Oh, oh, he's got a handbrake. Oh, let's have a little handbrake smile. There we go. Where did he go? Oh, it's going to be the easiest victory of, of my life. Straight into reverse. Come on, come on. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes, <laughs> he's <laughs> one in the <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> I got a bit carried away there, Paul. Oh, I got a bit on the grass and the grass is a bit slippery. I've missed your garage. So we tried again. Two, one, go. A little bit of a sneaky start. That's a great start. Oh, no! The simplest of tests, and neither of us can do one test complete. So we tried again and again. Reverse out of the garage, grab first gear. Come on, come on! I'm catching him up already, all oh, bit too much over his Stop! 
You were in my way. I came out of my garage and you were still parked in this road faffing about. I had to back off because you were still trying to get first gear. Well, oh, you only knocked one of your cones over and you're hitting a cone there. It was all getting a bit messy now, so we agreed one last time. Go. Quick it man. Good. Grab first gear. We're in, we're in, we're in. Always catching up. Needs to tidy. Handbrake turn. Oh, bit too much of a handbrake turn. Oh, he's catching me up this time. Nearly caught him up. Oh. <laughs> and stop. I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> You're not having that after I beat you twice. <laughs> Reluctantly, we called it a draw, and I thought it best to change the subject. <laughs> Out of the various attempts we had, that was just chaos. It was a bit, wasn't it? Bit of fun, though. Test. Anyway, yeah. before we go on to the lap times and some important stuff where a driver's more important than your car parking plans, styling wise, <laughs> I mean, I mean to talk to you about what's this number on your car, on your front wing, 0026 or something? Each one is individually numbered, so each, oh. so one of 3,000, this is number 25 of 3,000. And yours? 3,000? What? Yes. Oh, I see. Well, I just open my door, so you'll find mine is just uh, number 26 out of 500. Oh, wow. Much, yes. much Worldwide, that is. Worldwide. Wheels? I thought they are supposed to be carbon fibre. No, no. I haven't brought the carbon fibre wheels. <laughs> well, you get carbon fibre as well. It's a wet... <laughs> yes, with the Nürburgring special. They come on the back seat, but I've left them at home. I can't risk them. I've got the standard lightweight red, which I think are rather nice, Fuji rims. These are four Forged alloy wheels, the lightest ever on any BMW Group car. Yeah. But what about your sort of aero trim? Oh. I mean, those wheel spats don't do anything, and I'm not sure whether that monstrosity <laughs> on your rear roof does anything no, either. It's, it's, it's supposed to be quite aggressive looking, which All I think right. it is. I, I like the little gurney on the back of the... You've got this massive spoiler, then you've got this tiny little gurney on the you back. You call that a gurney, that little rubber strip, <laughs> which does absolutely nothing. And these are from the leftovers of the carbon fibre from the i8 and the i3 as well. Oh, very green. Yeah. Get you eco. But it, it's a fun looking car. I think the rear wing is a bit over the top. It could be a bit smaller. But otherwise, it's a funky looking car. Well, I car. have to say that is a very classy looking car. Yeah. You Very don't have classy. to have all the red logos either, that can be deleted optional. Oh, thanks, nice to know. I can only have white though, can you have more colours in yours? No, this is it. This is it, which I like, I think oh. that's good. All three generations of the GP have been in this colour, the grey with the red accents. Mm. All right, now about those lap times then, can I get on now? Get the clock going, <laughs> set some fast times. I've got some good news for you. What? We're going to set some lap times, but we got somebody that used to set lap times for a living. You mean not me? No. Some say that he's been introduced with the words, some say, more than any other living person. And that he's both a professional stunt driver and XD. Because he is. It's Ben Collins. Paul, why is he lining up to a standing start? He does know we don't do that on our shows, doesn't he? He's very familiar with that standing start from his old job. Yeah. Can we get going, because I'm freezing. Yes, yes, it is freezing out here, instead of sitting in the car <laughs> yeah. where I should be. Go on. Right. Are we ready? Go! Watch all that go, it doesn't even count. Oh, too much wheel spin off the line. Looks like the Turkish Grand Prix all over again. Wheel spin. Oh, I like the wheel spin. So into a medium speed corner, third gear. And the rear is really alive. Okay, starting his first lap. That sounds good, doesn't it? Oh, look all that water, starting first lap, on that. Bang. There we go. Nice. Whoa, big rotation in the slow corner. Second gear, just feed the power in. It looks great under brake, it doesn't dive big time, but it really keeps itself level. It looks purposeful on a track. Constantly sort of juggling between the front and rear axles. It doesn't feel entirely connected in a smooth way, but I do like it. Uh, bang. 48.32. 48.32. Doesn't mean too much, not in this weather. I love the feeling coming through this steering wheel. I can feel the understeer creeping, I can feel the limit of the car. He's done this once or twice before, you know? Yeah, yeah, I've seen him with a... Well, I never saw him. I saw a white helmet. <laughs> I presume it was him. Just because he says it was him, it might not yeah, have been him. Exactly. Short straight here, past the boys. They look a little chilly. I might just turn the heating down. Right, ready on the thumb. Hard braking. Ooh. Very consistent, 48.21, a tenth faster. Oh, good. Last run to the flag. This one feels pretty clean. Be the power in gently. Much better through the last corner that time. A good run onto the straight. Ooh, that was a bit quicker. 47.81 to beat. Yep. 
So with the Megane having set the pace, it was time to see what the lighter and more powerful Mini could do. Whoa, smooth off the line. A little bit easier as well, managing the gear changes with the auto. Who designed the original Mini? Uh, Sir Alec Isagonis. Do you know Frank Stevenson, the designer of the McLaren P1, designed this Mini? Oh, yeah. Well, he's involved in it anyway. Is that why it's got a rear wing to use for itself? Because it's got a McLaren wing. This Mini darts around quite a lot on its own suspension. Unlike the McGann, it felt more stable in a straight line, but in, in the corners where it matters, it's very glued. Oh, it's slower. It's a lot slower, a lot slower. A lot slower! 50 seconds! There we go. Oy. Nice rotation in the chicane. A little bit wild. I need to clean that up on lap two. See, around here, I think this is going to be faster, but judging by that first lap, it shows that I'm clueless. <laughs> it felt I'd really... never say you were clueless. Yeah. Oh, it? <laughs> it felt so short-footed. So, balance-wise, definitely easier to drive this car. Really, the top watch will tell the full story but it's a lot more user-friendly. 48.8. Okay, well, he's pulled a second off on his second lap. Oh, yeah, a second and a half. He's got another Come second on. to go. Come on, Mini. Let's do it for Oxford. It definitely feels faster onto the back straight than McGann. Getting that early power on and just easier on the brakes. So, be interested to see how it does shape up. Should be. Oh, and... Wow. 48.9. That's it. It's all over. That's it. With the fastest flying lap of 48.8 seconds, the Mini was almost exactly a second slower than the Megane. But before he saw the times, we wanted to see which one Ben thought was quicker. Well, going into it, I thought it'd be the Renault, but actually having driven them both, this one just because it has more grip, I'm pretty sure this is the faster car, the Mini. Oh. <laughs> it's easier to drive. What? It's slower. Just but it must be second. close. Just over a, a second. second. You're kidding me. Track. On a short track. I'm really surprised as well. I'm really surprised. This this was much less on the knife edge, and I was yeah. convinced that was grip. But of course, sometimes the easier cars to drive yeah. are slower. But I am very surprised. Yeah, the second slow. So the Nürburgring record holder is now the Klandau record holder as well. Right. It's been nice In having you anyway. Yeah. Ben, Thanks, guys. Jump yeah, sure. Really appreciate you coming along today. No, that's great. But, Thank you for having me. Yeah, no. Good, good to see very you. Very good. Very good. Hello, mate. Hi, Thanks a lot. Yeah. Nice to see you, Ben. See you soon. Yeah. You guys cleaned up well, by the way. The mud came out of your moustache and everything. See you, mate. You gonna give me a lift? Oh, it's like that. Boys, 